Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Peggy. I'm glad you called. I'll have to ask for a rain check, Angel. I'm all tied up. Mm Mm-hmm. An actor friend of mine just bought himself a gun, and the way it looks now, he figures to make a big hit. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels, then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Disappearing Doll. The Case of the Disappearing Doll. It's Wednesday evening in New York, and in a small furnished room on Manhattan's east side, a gentleman named Carl Hoffman glares at an old clock as if commanding it to stop. And when it continues to ignore Mr. Hoffman's wishes, he holds off and makes known his displeasure. Hey, take it easy, Carl. Don't tell me to take it easy, Sheppy. You went and busted the clock. That's not all I'm going to bust either. Where's Janet? Give her a chance, Carl. She'll show. When? She was due here an hour ago. Maybe she got tied up with that jerk, Harry Jensen. That's still no excuse. I told her it doesn't... Get that. Yeah, I'll get it. Just a second. Hello, Sheppy. Oh, you're just in time, Janet. What's the matter? Carl, he's blowing his top. Don't worry about it. It'll do him good. That you, Janet? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? Working. You were due here at eight. There were what they call extenuating circumstances. You out with Harry Jensen? Uh Uh-huh. How'd you make out? Well, he's loosening up a little. But? He still wouldn't kick through with the information. Well, that's a nice how do you do. Well, if you think you can do better... Maybe I can. Take it easy, Carl. You too, Janet. Where does he get off bawling me out? How long have I had to work on Harry? Look, we know it's only been a week, but time is getting short. Vince Dario will be here tomorrow. Who? Vince Dario. Carl's bringing him in from Toledo for this. Why? Because he's the best man in the business, that's why. And Vince isn't the kind of a guy who'll hang around if we can't promise him action. Well, I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, sure she is, Carl. Now, why don't you two just kiss and make up? Uh... All right, I'm sorry, Janet. Forget it, honey. Come here, baby. (laughs) Uh, don't mind me, folks. Uh, grab yourself a walk, Shepard. Come on, fellas, break it up. Huh? We got work to do. He's right, sweetheart. When do you think you'll have something to report from that Harry Jensen character? Well, he wanted to see me later tonight. Well, maybe tonight's the night. Maybe. How about it, Janet? You know, I think if you got him good and plastered, he might start talking. That's never been a problem with Harry. The tough thing is to make him quit. Well, get him started in the right direction, baby. And when he stops, we'll be on easy street. <laughs> Be such a sissy. Who's a sissy? You are. Yeah? Now let me show you something. Give me that bottle. Now, Harry, do you think you should? Watch. Well, well, well. <coughs> How's that? Oh, darling, you're terrific. Hey, you want to know something, Janet? What? Hey, you're pretty terrific, too. I'm, I'm crazy about you, baby. 
crazy enough to marry me? Say the word and we'll do it like that. Don't tempt me, Harry. <laughs> I mean it. So do I. What did we live on? What will we live on? What's the matter with me? I make good dough. Eighty bucks a week. <laughs> Is that anything to sneeze at? Oh, no, that's wonderful, darling. Yeah, I'm top man with the outfit. Who do you think makes all the important deliveries? Who? Me, that's who. Go on. Don't believe me, huh? Ever hear of the McGill Company? Yeah. Well, they got a payroll of 80,000 bucks a week, and I'm the guy who brings it to them. When? Huh? When do you bring it to them? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. We're not supposed to tell. And you claim you love me. I do, sweetheart. Then tell me. Tell me when you're going to deliver the McGill payroll. Now, what difference does that make? Think I could marry a man who didn't trust me? <laughs> Say, Janet. What? Well, ain't, ain't it, ain't it kind of stuffy in here? No. I, I feel awful warm. You know, I, I, I bet I could go to sleep. I, don't you pass out on me? <laughs> oh, don't, don't, Janet. I, I, I'm not about. Harry, uh, Harry, <laughs> the McGill payroll. When do you deliver it? Yeah. Friday. Friday at two. Looking for Carl Hoffman. Well, who are you? It's all right, Sheppy. Let him in. Hiya, Vince. Hello, Hoffman. Sheppy, Vince Dario. Glad to know you. Thanks. When would you get in, Vince? About 20 minutes ago. You couldn't have timed it better. Got something hot? Mm-hmm. Sheppy, here are the McGill Company. The people who make all those plumbing fixtures? That's right. Don't tell me you're figuring on knocking them off. That's what I'm figuring on. I wish you would have told me that in your letter. Why? Because I wouldn't have wasted my time coming to New York. Let him go, Carl. Shut up, Sheppy. Now, before you make up your mind, Vince, maybe you ought to hear the deal. There's no deal where you have to walk into a plant like McGill's. We don't have to walk in. We grab on the outside. Come again? The messenger who delivers the payroll is a character named Harry Jensen. We know to the minute what time he'll get to the factory. Now, you interested? I'm still here. They're tearing up the street in front of the place, so he has to park his bus a block away. Now, he'll come down Remsen Street. That's where you and I take over. Sheppy will be covering the street with a Thompson from a vacant room across the way. Sounds all right. It gets better as it goes along. Now, we give the dough to Janet. Wait a second. Who's Janet? A girlfriend of mine. I don't like it, Hoffman. What's the matter now? I don't like any caper where a babe is involved. You don't know this, babe. How do you think we find out when they're going to deliver the payroll? Oh. Yeah. She's a real stylish kid. What's her last name? Halsey. Wait till you meet her. I'd like to very much. It's all up to you, Vince. What do you say? We got the time, the place, and a girl. What more can a fella ask? How does she handle, Janet? All right, I guess. You guess? Well, I never did like driving in this kind of weather. Don't be silly, baby. It's going to make things a lot easier all around. Right, Vince? Sure, the rain will keep them off the streets. Whoa, sweetheart, wait a minute. Right here will be fine. Should I shut her off? I'll keep her running. And remember, when you start off again, go right into second and don't feed her too much gas. Yeah, I got it. What time is it, Vince? Uh, make it a couple of minutes or two. Mm -hmm. You see Sheppy across the street? I think so. Well, that does it. Are you sure you know what to do, Janet? Yeah, as soon as I get the bag, I head straight for my apartment. That's right. Don't hang around no matter what. We'll all be over to your place by nine to divvy up. Supposing you aren't. Don't give it a thought, sweetheart. It'll take more than just... What? Is that our friend, Harry? Well, On the corner. Yeah, that's him. All right, Vince. Here's where we go to work. Lots of luck, honey. Thanks, baby. Give me a cigarette. Yeah. Where's that lighter you're so proud of? Oh, what do you know? It works. Here he comes. Hey, buddy. Me? Yeah. Can you tell us what Tremont Avenue is? Oh, well, uh, you're on the wrong side of town, mister. I tell you what you better do. No, I'll tell you what you better do. Don't make uh, a move, bud. Not even a teeny one. Hey, what is this? Just what it looks like. Pass that grip to my friend. Go on. Sorry, pal. You know how it is. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, that's all right, mister. 
I got a good memory for faces. I won't forget you. In that case, let me give you something else to remember me, boss. <laughs> Vince? Hi. Oh. Went off clockwork, didn't I? Yeah. Where's Janet? She ain't here. Huh? What? No, no, no. I was the first one in. It's lucky I had a key to her place, huh? And you're lucky I don't have a suspicious mind. Well, I have. Did she phone in? Uh-uh. You told her to come straight here, didn't you, Carl? Yeah. Well, you don't think she had an accident, do you? No, no, no. We would have heard about it. I had the radio in the car tuned to the police calls. What if the cops snapped her? You kidding? There was nobody within miles of her. After you chucked the bag into a car, she took off. She'll show up, Vince. She better. She's got all the dough. Just what are you getting at? You told me yourself she's a very smart girl. Women who are beautiful shouldn't be brainy. Meaning? I think we got a double cross. You're nuts. I'll leave it to Sheppy. No, no, no. Janet wouldn't do that, Vince. Why not? Well... Well, because she never did it before. Did she ever have 80 grand before? Look, what are you worried about? It isn't even 9 o'clock. Well, supposing she doesn't show by 9. Then I'll start looking for her. And if she isn't dead when I find her, she'll wish to heaven she was. You guys got a butt. I'm fresh out. There's a pack in my coat pocket, Sheppy. Thanks. Carl, you wouldn't have anything else in that pocket. Like what, Vince? Like 80 grand. Pardon me for pointing, but it's 20 after 9. Your girlfriend hasn't shown up yet. So? So I think we ought to start looking for her. Suppose she comes back in the meantime. You can always leave a note. No, no. I think one of us ought to hang around here. Who, for instance? Why, do you want to? Maybe I better. Okay, you wait here. Sheppy, you cover the east side. You know the places Janet likes. I got you. What are you going to do, Hoffman? I got an angle I want to try. Like what? Never mind. But if Janet's tossing us a curve, I think I know the one guy who can throw her out at home. I'll let you know how I make out. Yeah? I'd like to see Mike Waring, the Falcon, please. You are now. Oh, well, uh, my name's Carl Huffman. Yeah? Uh, can I come in? Oh, sorry. Thanks. Sit down. Much obliged. Well, what's on your mind? Well, I'm looking for a girl. Aren't we all? No, I mean, this is a special one. Her name is Janet Halsey. Janet Halsey? Yeah. She's my girlfriend. Well, maybe we'd better take this from the beginning. Well... Janet and I were supposed to be married next Sunday. So I opened up a joint account for us at the bank. How big? $2,000. And she skipped? Mm-hmm. This morning. She lived at the Brighton Towers. How do you know she didn't meet with an accident? Well, she's done the same thing before. Oh, she has? Yeah. She served three years in the women's penitentiary under the name of Lois Hart. She got out in 48. Well, how come you trusted her with your money? Well, you know how it is, Waring. You always hope that this time it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do, Hoffman. As you say, the first problem is to locate the girl. Yeah, and the moment you do, will you give me a call? I'll be waiting at the Brighton. Brighton? Didn't you say that's where your girlfriend lived? Yeah. I'm using her apartment to operate from. Mm -hmm. You see, I wouldn't want to miss her if she came back. Well, I guess that does it, Falcon. I'll be waiting for your call. to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Carl Hoffman recruited Mike Waring in his search for Janet Halsey. And now as we find Mike, he is making a tour of some of the shadier spots on New York's 3rd Avenue. You're looking for someone, mister? As a matter of fact, I am. Falcon. Hello, Joey. A long time no see, pal. What can I do for you, Mike? Well, you're a man who knows all the wrong people. Ever hear of a girl named Janet Halsey? Huh? Huh? We seem to have an audience. Yeah, and I like your act, mister. Only I missed the last line. Would you mind repeating it? Now, cut it out, Sheppy. This is Mike Waring. I don't give a rap who he is. What do you want with Janet Halsey? I don't think that's any of your business. All right. 
Suppose we take a little walk outside. No, thanks. It's too hot. That's all right. I got something in my pocket to chill you off. Now, take it easy, Just Shepard. Just keep out of this, Joe. What do you say, Waring? I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. No. So start walking. I'm sorry, Mike. It's all right, Joey. All the day's work. Quit gabbing. Come on. I haven't got all day. Look, if you'd like to put this off, I'll be a wise guy. Okay, where do we go from here? Let's try that alley. Now, look, You friend. heard me. All right, hold it. This is fine. Now, let's pick up where we left off. What do you want with Janet? It's a long story, Sheppy. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You're not going anywhere. Oh, I might surprise you. Here, let go. Get that hand out of your pocket. Let go or I'll what? Oh. Oh. All right, punk, on your feet. Let me alone. I said on your feet. Why are you so interested in Janet Halsey? Maybe I'm looking for her, too. Maybe, and then again, maybe you know where she is. No. Where can I find her? I got no idea. Well, get one. <laughs> Let me go. Come on, Shep, you can keep this up all night. <laughs> Have you been to the Brighton Towers? No, but someone else has, and she wasn't there. Well, you might... You might try the Riverdale. Apartment 4E. Well, thanks a lot, fella. You've been a great help. Let's do it again sometime. Where's Sheppy, Vince? Out looking. Did he phone in? No, I guess he had nothing to report. How did you make out? Not so hot. I guess that leaves me up the well-known creek. What are you griping about? We're all in the same boat. Yeah, but I didn't bring Janet into the act. You did, Hoffman. Okay, and I'll find her. I don't see him making any progress. Maybe not, but I hired somebody who will. Who? A fellow named Mike Waring. A private dick? That's right. What's the idea? You going off your trolley? Relax, will you, Vince? I gave him a song and dance about wanting to find Janet. This guy wearing has plenty of contacts. Well, I don't like it. And you're the boy who was belly aching that I wasn't doing anything. You didn't have to go that far. No, how far would you go for 80 grand? Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. That must be Sheppy. I'll take it. Yeah, what do you want? I beg your pardon. I must have the wrong number. Wait a minute. Is that you, Janet? Hello. Hello. What's the trouble? I think that was Janet. You're imagining things. Don't tell me. I'd recognize her voice anywhere. What made her call and then hang up? You know something, Vince? That's just what I was wondering. I'll be back in an hour. Hello? Hello, is this Janet Halsey's apartment? Yeah. Carl Hoffman there. Who's calling? Mike Waring. We just stepped out for a while. Want to leave a message? Who's this? It's okay. I'm a friend of his. My name is Vince Dario. Well, tell Hoffman I've got a lead on his girlfriend. She's supposed to be at Riverdale Arms. If you'll meet me at the 86 Club, we'll go over together. Thanks a lot, Mr. Waring. I know Carl will be glad to hear that. It's about time, Hoffman. Sorry, I'm late, but I just got your message. Where'd you get your dope from? A punk named Sheppy Oliver. What? Yeah, he pulled a gun on me. That's the funniest thing I've heard yet. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Sheppy's a friend of mine. Oh, is that so? Sure. When he heard you asking for Janet, he must have gotten suspicious. Why? Well, he's not very bright. What was that address he gave you again? Riverdale Arms. That's what I thought. It's a bump steer. How do you know? That's where Sheppy lives himself. Why would he give me his own address? Probably rattled him so badly. It was the only thing he could think of. Well, that's one possibility. Can you think of any other? Yeah, maybe Janet had a partner. You mean Sheppy? Why not? He's my best friend. Uh -huh. Janet was your best girl. Oh, Let's go see who's playing on whose team. Four A, B. It's the last one down the hall, Waring. You know, there's one thing that throws me. Only one? After I left your office, I went back to Janet's apartment. I was talking with Vince Dario when the phone rang. So? A girl got on. I would have sworn it was Janet, but she claimed it was the wrong number. Well, maybe she was trying to get in touch with Sheppy, and she got frightened when she heard your voice. Could be, but I never thought Sheppy was her type. This is the place. I just can't believe that he... Hmm. 
What's the matter? Unlock? Yeah. Yeah. Just as I figured. Well, I guess I better call the police, huh? Well, what's the matter? Take a good look. Holy smoke. It's Shippy. Yeah, and with that slug in his head, I don't think he's in any position to call the cops himself. Where's the phone? Come on, Vince, open up. What took you so long? I was busy. Who's your friend? No, oh, it's right. You boys haven't met. Mike, this is Vince Dario. How do you do? Hi. How did that lead pan out? Not too bad. You find Janet there? No, we found Sheppy. I don't get it. He was murdered. Murdered? By who, Janet? That's one way to look at it. Bill Rennie out of? Yeah, I suppose Janet was working with a man. If you mean Sheppy, I don't see it. That's just what I said. Look, Carl, suppose we forget the whole thing. What do you mean? We gambled and lost. Oh, you surprised me, Vince. A couple hours ago, you were balling me out for not doing anything. Now you're willing to write the whole thing off. There's no use crying over spilt milk. Sure. With 80 grand in your pocket, you can always buy yourself another quart. Oh? You say something, Waring? Just oh. Look, Carl, you've been hinting at something all along. What is it? I think you know where Janet is. You're crazy. I was a sucker not to see it before. Don't be a fool, Carl. Can't you see what Janet's doing? She might have, Sheppy. Now she's turning us against each other. Well, somebody put her up to it, and I got a feeling it's you. Quit it, quit it you joker. Cut it out, Hoffman. Out of this, Mike. Where is she, Vince? Come on, Hoffman, break it up. Mike, let go. I said break it up. Okay. Dario. What was the idea, Hoffman? I don't like double crosses. Get the keys out of his pocket. What for? I got a hunch Janet is holed up in his apartment. And I'm going to play it to the hilt. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only a few minutes have passed since Carl Hoffman decided that Janet might be hiding in Vince Dario's apartment. Now he and Mike are at Dario's, but so far there's been no sign of Janet. Well, looks like your hunch was worthless, Hoffman. Did you try the kitchen? I've been all over the place. There's no one here. I still believe that Janet was... Uh, wait a minute. Open that drawer again. Hmm? I thought I saw an envelope in there. Yeah, you're right. Mr. Vince Dario. 2719 Bolton Avenue, Detroit. Look at the postmark. Bedford Hills, March 16th, 1948. Now look at the return address on the other side. Janet Halsey, State Penitentiary for Women. Uh-huh. You get it? And I was right. Vince knew Janet all along. Well, you could build up a convincing case on the face of it. Yeah, but where is she now? Well, can't you think of somewhere she might go? Oh, we've covered every possible hideout. No, we haven't. There's one place you're forgetting, Hoffman. Whose? Yours. What are you talking about? You're the man who put Janet up to this. You planned to double cross your mob from the beginning. Yeah? Yeah, and I thought you did pretty well. You murdered Sheppy and framed Vince Dario, and that only left Janet to be taken care of. What about you? I don't think you're man enough. That just goes to... <laughs> What's the matter, Hoffman? You lose something? That's what you're looking for? Where'd you get that gun? I lifted it off you when you were shoving Dario around. Just say the word, friend, and I'll give it back to you. A slug at a time. Well, what happened after that, Mike? You know the rest, Janet. As soon as the police picked up Carl, I went to his apartment. And picked me up. And not a bad day's work at that. Thanks. No, no, I'm talking about the little bag you had with you containing 80 grand belonging to the McGill Company. Oh, now, what gets me is how you people knew exactly what time the payroll was to be delivered. Oh, I had inside information. From the boy who delivered it? How did you guess? It figured. What did you do? Use your feminine wiles? It didn't take much. He wanted to prove what a great big man he was. Mm -hmm. Well, you have that effect on the opposite sex. Do I? Yeah, it's just too bad you had all your work for nothing. Yeah, I guess when you come down to it, I was pretty lucky at that. You sure were, Angel. There's no doubt that with Sheppy and Vince Dario disposed of, you were next on Carl's list. You dirty double-crosser. No, no, no. There's no reason to be angry. After all, you were in on 99% of the plot. 
He just neglected to tell you the big finish he planned for you. Oh, incidentally, when you called your apartment and got Hoffman on the phone, why did you pretend it was the wrong number? We had it arranged. When Carl picked up the phone and said, yes, what do you want? I knew he wasn't alone, and that was my cue to hang up. Mm, pretty cute. <laughs> that was the second way he convinced Dario he was acting above board. What was the first, Mike? Hiring me. He had to go through with the motions of trying to find you, and what would make him look more innocent than hiring a private detective? I still don't see what proved you he was guilty. Well, the return address on the envelope I found in Dario's room gave your name as Janet Halsey. And Carl told me when you were up at the women's pen, you served time under the name of Lois Hart. So, obviously, the letter was a frame. And Carl was the only one who could have planted it. That's right. You know, you're pretty wonderful, honey. <laughs> I mean, uh, Mr. Waring. Oh, I don't mind you getting affectionate. After all, we're going to be seeing lots of each other, Janet. Are we? Mm-hmm. Almost past our destination. Is this where you live? <laughs> What's the matter with you, Janet? Don't you recognize the building? It's police headquarters. That's right. Why, you no good double cross. Now, now, now. What are you complaining about, Angel? I promised you we'd be seeing a lot of each other. Can I help it if for the next ten years it'll have to be through bars? <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nina. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm in the middle of a hot deal. Mm -hmm. Some boys I know are interested in the big money, and they figure if we put all our capital in a gun, we ought to make a killing. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. Before the Falcon starts on tonight's case, I'd like to say just a word about something extra delicious. Kraft Mayonnaise. Here's really true mayonnaise at its finest. One taste will tell you that. Just one taste of delicate, exquisitely flavored Kraft mayonnaise will tell you that here is mayonnaise to delight even the fussiest cook. Try it. Try it and see for yourself. Tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of wonderful tasting Kraft mayonnaise. <laughs> And now, the case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. It's late evening in New York, and in a shabby apartment on Manhattan's west side, a short, heavy-set boy named Dixie Taylor watches his companion, Georgie Reynolds, attack an age-old problem, how to dispose of an empty bottle. But George is equal to the occasion, for spying the fireplace, he comes up with a practical solution. Well, I guess that's one way to get rid of your empties. Anybody ask you, Taylor? No. All right, then shut your face. Hazel? Hazel! You want me, George? No, I was just rehearsing. I'm going in for hard calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I was busy. Well, I hope I wasn't interrupting anything important. No, honey. Get me another bottle. Well, darling, don't Didn't you Didn't think... I tell you something? All right, George. There's one in my bedroom closet. Well, what are you staring at, Dixie? I was just wondering about Hazel. Well, don't. If you're going to do any wondering, think about Martinez. Although he'll be here. Yeah, when? He was due an hour ago. Or maybe he had some trouble finding Saunders. Oh, that's just ducky. What goes on with you guys anyway? Do I have to oh, tell you... That's probably Martinez and Saunders now. Hazel? Yes, George? Didn't you hear that? Well, I was trying to get... Never mind the alibis. Answer it. Yeah, just a second. Hello, Hazel. Hello, Mr. Martinez. Your boyfriend here? Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Come on in, bring your friend with you. Hi, Georgie. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Louis. Well, you took your own sweet time getting here, Martinez. Well, I have a little bit trouble finding Mr. Saunders here. Gentlemen. Bring in a couple of chairs, Hazel. Yes, dear. All right, now go on, go on, beat it. But, darling... I said beat it. Uh... These fellas and I have some business to discuss. Uh, well, Martinez, did you tell Saunders what I lined up? No, I think was maybe better I leave that for you. It's a snatch, Saunders. A what? A snatch. 
That's what I thought you said. Well, it's been nice knowing you, gentlemen. Sit down, Saunders. No, thanks. I'm not interested. It cost you something to listen? All right. Ever hear a big joke, Gallagher? Well, enough to know that if he's the party you got in mind, you can include me out, as the saying goes. Now, don't be a jerk, Saunders. Sure, Gallagher's a big rackets boy, but that's just why we can get away with this. You're crazy. Now, look, Martinez, why didn't you tell Let me that... Let Georgie finish. Dixie and I used to work for Gallagher. We know what makes him tick. A guy in his position would never yell copper. Yes, but there's one thing you're overlooking. From what I know of Mr. Gallagher, he never goes anywhere without two or three of his boys. How are you going to separate the wheat from the chaff? I got it all figured out. Gallagher's a ladies' man, see? Now, if a babe were to call him up and arrange a blind date, it's dollars to donuts he'd go for it. I doubt it. Don't tell me. I've seen it work a dozen times. You got the girl? Yeah. Yeah, Hazel, the one who let you in. I suppose she talks. She wouldn't dare. Besides, she doesn't have to know what's going on. I'll tell her the whole thing's a gag. Well, where do I come in? Hazel will arrange to meet Gallagher at the 49 Club. You and Martinez will pick him up. What about you and Taylor? Oh, we can't take a chance. He knows us. Well, what do you say, Saunders? You think this will work, Martinez? Why not? Georgie's got all the angles figured out. <laughs> so it would seem. Okay, gentlemen. Deal me in. <laughs> Yeah? I'd like to speak to Mr. Gallagher, please. Uh, who wants him? Well, he wouldn't know me, but you can tell him I'm a friend of Gloria Wilson. I never heard of her. Are you, Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, that's right. Well, Gloria made me promise to look you up when I got to New York. I'm sorry, sister. I don't know anybody by that handle. She was a chorus girl at Pirandello's. Hey, wait a minute, baby. What's your name? Hazel Wolf. Uh, you look anything like you sound, Hazel? <laughs> oh, now, really, Mr. No, Gallagher? No kidding, because if you do, I'd like to see you. Uh, I'm afraid that's out of the question, Mr. Gallagher. I'm flying to the coast tonight. Ah, uh -huh. what time? Quarter after one. Well, that still gives us three hours to get acquainted. What do you say, baby? Mm, all right. But uh, you will have to meet me here. You see, I'm expecting friends. Oh, that's okay. Where are you? It's a little place called the 49 Club. Do you know it? No, but I'll manage. Uh, uh, what color dress you wearing? Blue. <laughs> My favorite color. Okay, Hazel, I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Uh, who, me? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have no seen a blonde around, huh? Uh, blue dress? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, uh, who are you? Hazel's cousin. Didn't she tell you we're having a little farewell party in her honor? Well, she said something about friends. Oh, now, don't get frightened. We'll be pushing off in a few minutes, and that'll give you enough time to talk to Hazel alone. Uh, where is she? She's in the back room with the rest of the family. Well, let's go. Uh... Right down here. Uh, by the way, fella, I don't believe I caught your name. Well, it's the same as Hazel's. <laughs> Related on your father's side. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, here we are. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Louie. This is uh, Hazel's friend. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Where's Hazel? Oh, she just stepped out for a minute. Well, uh, where's the rest of the crowd? Crowd? Yeah, her cousin told me she had a flock of relatives down here. Never believe Saunders. He's a big joker. Saunders? I thought his name was Walsh. What goes on here, anyway? Watch him, Saunders. Just keep those hands where they are, Mr. Gallagher. Frisky Martinez. Get your hands ah, off me. Don't get excited, Mr. Gallagher. He's bad for your blood pressure. Is he clean? He's now. Good. Would you be kind enough to accompany us, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, no. You're not getting me to walk out of here. Well, as long as you feel... <laughs> Have to hand it to him, Martinez. He said he wasn't walking out of here, and uh, he was right. What's the matter with those guys, anyway? Got the time, Dixie? You asked me that just five minutes ago, George. Now, don't get smart. Think anything could have gone wrong? Not a chance. What'd you tell Galga's wife? Just what you told me. 
I said we had a husband, and if she wanted them back, she was to dig up a hundred grand. Yeah, maybe I should have gone for it myself instead of sending Saunders and Martinez. What are you worried about, Georgie? They managed the snatch, all right. Yeah, but how do I know that they're George. able... George, I'll get it. Hello, George. You got it, Saunders? What does this bike look like? All right, let me have it. How'd it go off? Oh, like clockworks. As soon as Mrs. Gallagher gives us the money, I give her the key and took her away to find her husband. Oh, nice work, Louie. Yes, I guess congratulations are in order all around. One hundred thousand dollars. Just, just think of it. You think of it, Saunders, because that's as close as you're getting to it. What do you mean, George? Well, I tell you, friend, it's like this. The boys and I had a little talk. And you decided why split four ways, huh? Well, you catch on fast. But didn't you think I'd have anything to say about that? Sir, I put away that gun, Saunders. Uh, yeah, yeah. Georgie was only clowning. Yes, I'll bet. You know, I'm a little surprised at you, Dixie. Uh, look, if, if we were going to double-cross you, you think we'd send you for the dough? Sure, that doesn't make sense, does it? But, uh, no, don't move, Palsy. Just drop the gun. Nice going, Martinez. Well, Mr. Smart Guy, what do you say? <laughs> no. That's enough, Georgie. Go on, Saunders. Beat it. All right. Gentlemen, if this little get-together hasn't been pleasant, it, it has been informative. Well, I'll be very glad to show you what I learned next time we meet. Hello? Uh... I'm looking for a Michael Waring, private detective called the Falcon. Well, you picked the right place. Oh, are you... Mm -hmm. Come on in, Angel. And... Thank you. Sit down. I suppose I should introduce myself. It's customary. Uh, well, my name is Hazel Walsh. Hazel Walsh? Oh, that's right. Who recommended me? Well, I remembered hearing about the Falcon years ago. And you filed the information away for this more convenient date, hmm? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are you available for a case? At $50 a day and expenses, I am. What's your problem? Well, it's really not my problem, Mr. Waring. A, a girlfriend of mine is engaged to some man, and she believes that he's done something... Uh, Crooked? Of course not. All right, let's call it unethical. Go on. Well, uh, if the man ever was caught, could they force my friend to be a witness against him? They certainly could, even though she found out about it by accident? Doesn't make any difference, Miss Walsh. Well, isn't there anything she can do? Nope. Only if she were married to him could she refuse to testify. Well, if we got married... I mean, if they got married, <laughs> I'd... <laughs> Let's use the first example, Hazel. Hmm? It'll be easier on us both. Now, look here, Mr. Wayne. No, Wayne. you look, Angel. You're obviously in some sort of a jam. Now, what is it? I tell you, you're wrong. What did your boyfriend do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. I suppose you tell me his name. It's uh, Harry Prescott. Come on, Hazel. What's his name? Well, you have no right to question me like this. No, but the police have. But you, you're not going to call him. No? Well, it, it's George Reynolds. He the same Georgie Reynolds who used to run with the Gallagher mob? No. Uh, no, it's not that one at all. Uh -huh. Well, suppose you introduce us and let me see for myself. Hmm? I'm an easy man to convince. <laughs> Well, sounds as though Mike follows that good old theory that seeing is believing. Of course, that's a pretty smart idea, I think. And it's a good one for everyone to follow when it comes to food. For example, I can tell you how satiny smooth Kraft mayonnaise is. What an amazing, creamy, rich texture it has because of the special way Kraft blends it. But to really appreciate just how smooth Kraft Kitchen Fresh mayonnaise is, get a jar and see for yourself. That way you can taste for yourself, too. You won't have to take my word for it that Kraft mayonnaise is especially good, with a delicate, delightful flavor, the result of careful blending of only the finest oils and eggs, the most fragrant vinegars and spices. Yes, the best way to tell is to taste Kraft mayonnaise yourself. Try it on a cool and colorful salad of hollowed-out tomatoes topped with spicy deviled eggs and garnished with fresh and tangy watercress. It's really delicious. So tomorrow when you shop, 
Get a jar of Kraft Kitchen Fresh mayonnaise. Whether you're serving a simple, everyday kind of salad or a fancy company special, you'll enjoy it more with true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Hazel Walsh introduced herself to Mike Waring, and now the two are on their way to Georgie Reynolds' apartment. And strangely enough, Miss Walsh doesn't seem too delighted by the trip. I don't know why I let you talk me into this, Mr. Waring. It's simple, Hazel. You're the kind of girl who's taken such a licking you could be talked into anything. That's a lie. All right, then why did you bring me here? Because I thought you could help George. Well, if it's the same George I think it is, you'll have to get yourself another boy. Whatever made you tie up with a guy like that? I don't think that concerns you. This the place? Yes. Can I help? No, thanks. Where's the light switch? Uh, a little over to your right. Have you got it? Yeah. George! Stop that. Oh, I saw him. Now you stay where you are. Is he? Yes, he's nothing else but. Oh, no. Someone gave it to him right through the temple. George! George! Look, you get a grip on yourself. <laughs> How can you talk to me like that when my fiancé's been murdered? I can talk to you like that because it's not your fiancé. What? This is a boy named Dixie Taylor. Now will you behave? I can't believe it, Mr. Waring. There, there must be some mistake. What's the matter, Hazel? You disappointed it isn't, George? Of course not. Did you know Taylor? Uh, well, he was a friend of George's. I saw him around here once or twice. Who else was a member of this fraternity? Uh, just a man named Louis Martinez. Oh. Well, that's some select group. I've heard of all of them. Did they blackball anyone recently? I don't know what you mean. Did your boyfriend of the Martinez cross anyone lately? I don't think so. Hazel, you better stop lying. You don't do it very well. Well, there was a Nick Saunders. Good-looking boy, around 35? Yes. What did they fight about? I don't know. You think Saunders might have killed Dixie? I suppose so. How about George? No. Oh, Hazel, don't be a sucker. You think he'll appreciate your loyalty? Why don't you ask him, Wary? Oh, Georgie. All right, I will. Isn't it nice of her not to suspect you, George? Not to suspect me of what? Take a look under that blanket. Oh. Who did it? That's just what I was asking. You got any suggestions? Larry or one? Say, who invited you here, anyway? She didn't. Oh, is that so? Uh, darling, I was only thinking of you. Well, that's the truth, George. Never have I seen a woman show so much concern. All right, Waring, beat it. I don't need you. How about Hazel? She don't need you either. Go on, Hazel, tell him. Uh, I made a mistake, Mr. Waring. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yes. Okay, so be it. Oh, when the police show up, tell them I had to leave. It'll huh? be a pleasure. Listen, Georgie, I, I know what you're going to say. Do you? Oh, darling, I was only thinking of you. I, I know what you, Dixie Martinez, did to Saunders. That's why I went to Waring. Well, that was smart. But I was worried about Saunders. And I'm worried about you, Hazel. You think you'll ever learn to keep your mouth shut? Or do I have to teach you? Hello, Corbett. This is Mike Waring. Ah, uh, what's on your mind, Mike? Listen, what kind of caper has Georgie Reynolds pulled recently? Well, there's some talk going around that Big Joe Gallagher was snatched last week. Oh, that's crazy, Sergeant. I saw him on 48th Street yesterday. I know, but that's the story we got. According to one of my pet stoolies, his missus laid out a hundred grand to get him back. You think Georgie Reynolds was behind it? Wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, can't you do anything? You tell me how when we got no proof. Mrs. Gallagher hasn't seen fit to make a complaint. Was Nick Saunders in on it? You seem to know more about it than I do. What do you know about Saunders? Not quite enough, Sergeant. I'll let you know the minute I learn more. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a body over at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. Go over and pick it up like a good fellow, will you? <laughs> Yes? Hello, Saunders. Remember me? 
Oh, sure, sure. You're the uh, falcon, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Can I come in? Why not? Sorry I can't offer you anything. Well, you never know unless you try. All right, Waring, what's on your mind? Well, I heard you and George Reynolds had a little trouble last night. You must be thinking of two other guys. Well, what gets me is why you took it out on Taylor. Taylor? Yeah, haven't you heard? He's dead. Not my old pal Dixie. Well, 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 what do you know? I know you better have a pretty good alibi handy. Come on, Saunders, get your coat. We're going to headquarters. Uh, just brief me on one thing, Waring. You're a private detective, aren't you? That's right. Now, where do you get off pushing people around? It's my hobby. You're going to get your coat or will you go like that? Oh, act your age. Put away the gun, Saunders. Put it away. Wait, Wait, I... Cut it out. Go on, drop it. No, I... Drop it. it. All right, now, what do you say, friend? Do we take that little ride I mentioned? Okay, Waring. But don't be surprised if someday I return the favor. <laughs> Is there a guy named Mike Waring here? That's me, Inspector. Come in here. I want to talk to you. Okay. See you later, Sergeant. You bet. Sit down, Waring. Oh, thanks. Sergeant Corbett tells me you're the boy who brought in Saunders. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Well, I'm glad you got a kick out of it, because I just talked to headquarters about you. What for? To see how they feel about attempted blackmail. What are you talking about? Didn't you try to shake down Saunders? Is that what he claimed? No, I can put two and two together myself. Well, you ought to go back to school, Inspector. There's something wrong with your arithmetic. I doubt it. When you start shoving a guy around just because he's got a record, there's only one answer. Oh, you're crazy. I tell you, Saunders killed Dixie Taylor. How? He shot him, that's how. From Philadelphia? Oh, what are you talking about? Going to the coroner, Dixie Taylor died at 8.30 p.m. So what? Well, at 8.25, Saunders was picked up by the Pennsylvania State Police for carrying a rod without a license. And he wasn't released until two hours later. Now, who doesn't know his arithmetic? Hello, Mike. What? Huh? Hazel, how did you get in here? The superintendent let me in. I've got to talk to you. Now, that makes us even, Angel, because I want to talk to you. Look, you've got to drop the case. Now, that raises a problem. How can I drop something I've never been paid for in the first place? I don't understand. I mean, if I'm going to work for free, I might as well do it for myself. You can't do that. Well, I'd like to see someone stop me. What's Georgie's phone number? Why? Because I want to talk to him. Uh, what about? The murder of Dixie Taylor. He doesn't know anything about it. Are you kidding? Now, what's the number? Come on, Hazel, I'm not clowning. It's Raleigh 4099. Now, cheer up, baby. When I get through with Mr. Reynolds, he won't ever lay a hand on you again. You don't hear me complain. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me you love the guy. I do. Hello. Uh, is that you, Reynolds? No, uh, this is Luis Martinez. Who are you? Mike Waring. Let me talk to George. I'm afraid that is out of the question. Listen, Martinez, if I have to come over there... He still won't do you any good. He's dead. He's what? Yeah. Someone fed him a dose of strychnine about an hour ago. And somehow we didn't seem to agree with him. <laughs> True, Mike. I, I don't believe it. Martinez was lying. I don't suppose we go over and check. Oh, but George is dead. Oh, come on, Hazel. Get a grip on yourself. You're better off without him. Oh, how can you talk that way? Because it's the truth. He was no good. That's a lie. Oh, don't give me that. You knew he was the brain behind the big Joe Gallagher snatch. No, you're wrong. Who are you kidding? Well, so incidentally, what happened to the loot? The loot? The ransom money Mrs. Gallagher paid off. How would I know? Well, you would if anybody would. You can't keep it, Angel. I didn't intend to. Then where is it? Well, they, they didn't tell me, but I, I watched them through the keyhole. Where did they put it? Under the middle cushion of the sofa in George's apartment. Okay, let's get it before someone else gets the same idea. I wouldn't be surprised if we're a little late now. <laughs> You know what Mike said just now about getting there first? Sounds like the race that usually goes on at my house for the last piece of cold chicken in the refrigerator. But a chicken sandwich sure makes a swell snack, especially when you put lots of Kraft mayonnaise on the bread. 
Mmm, the delicate flavor of Kraft mayonnaise is just exactly what you want. And Kraft mayonnaise is so creamy, rich, and smooth. Just try it. For a grand sandwich spread, as well as for fine salads, there's nothing like true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring learned that with the recent death of Georgie Reynolds and the earlier demise of Dixie Taylor, the original quartet was now working as a duo on $100,000 worth of loose notes. And now as we rejoin the team of Mark and Hazel, they're making their entrance at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. But Hazel seems to be suffering with a bad case of stage fright. What's the matter, Angel? Having trouble? I guess I'm a little nervous. Now, here, let me try. Ah, come in, folks. Louis. What do you expect? Shut the door, Waring. Look, Martin. I said shut the door. I'll raise him high. All right, you don't have to worry. I'm clean. I don't believe in taking chances. What's the matter? No sporting blood? Yeah, I guess I'm yellow. Too bad Georgie didn't have as much sense. Where is he? Move the club chair. What? Yeah, go on. He's behind it. George! That won't bring him back. You killed him? Well, while we are on this subject, where were you at 11.30? She was waiting for me in my apartment. Mm, nice. Look, you better watch that mouth. And you better watch yours. All right, Hazel, where is it? Where is what? The dough we got from Gallagher. I don't know. Don't give me that. I want it, honey bunch, and nothing's going to keep me from it, understand? I wouldn't count on that, Louis. What? No, no, no. Don't bother turning around, Martinez. It's only me. Listen, Saunders. Don't mind if I do, Martinez, but first drop the gun. That's a sweetheart. You want me to pick it up? No, no, no. Don't trouble yourself, Waring. I can manage. Oh, what happened to Georgie? The same thing that happened to Dixie Taylor. And... He was such a sweet guy, wasn't he? Oh, by the way, when I walked in here, Martinez was asking you a question. I don't remember your answering it. Would you like to now? You'll never see a penny of that money. Come on, come on, Hazel. We're wasting time. Where is it? You better tell him, Angel. I think he means business. I do, and make no mistake about it. Uh, it's under the middle cushion of the sofa. What? Stay where you are, Martinez. I'll do my own checking. Oh, now, isn't that pretty? Listen, Saunders. I'm afraid I haven't the time, Louis. You have to find it, Saunders. What? Get down, Hazel! Had hey. enough, Saunders? Yes, he has. Oh, well, hello, Sergeant. Hi, Mike. The inspector sent me around to apologize. Oh, what happened? Twenty minutes ago, a call came through from Philly that that Saunders they picked up there was this guy's cousin. I thought there was something screwy playing. Well, if you fellas don't mind... Uh, just a minute. Where are you going, Martinez? Well, I just figure it's no point of my hanging around just now. Well, you better get used to it, Louis. You're going to do quite a bit of it from now on. What are you talking about? You killed Dixie Taylor and George Reynolds. You're crazy. Well, maybe you're right. Here I've got you hanging when any kid knows that in New York they burn you. All right, Sergeant, prove it to him. Mike. Oh, don't say it, Angel. But I was just going to ask... Ask me to explain things, hmm? Well, yes. Well, I guess you're entitled to it. You see, this was a modern version of thieves falling out. When Louis Martinez saw how George double-crossed Saunders, it didn't take him long to figure that he was next. So he decided to beat your boyfriend to the punch. First he killed Dixie, which made it look bad for Saunders. And then to ensure his bet, he killed George. Then why did he wait at the house for us? Well, he had to. You were the only one who knew where the money was stashed. And until he got it, he committed two murders for nothing. Well, couldn't have Saunders have done that? Mm -mm. I knew Martinez was the killer long before Saunders ever showed up. How? Well, Martinez told us he hadn't called the police, so obviously there was no autopsy performed. Yet he knew exactly what poison killed George and the time he got it. Remember he told me over the phone that George had been fed a dose of strychnine an hour before I called? Mm -hmm. Well, now, how would he know that unless he was right there feeding it to him? Um, shall I tell you something? I wish you would. I lied to you about loving George, you see. Otherwise, I was afraid you might suspect me. Oh, I couldn't afford to, Angel. Uh, why not? Well, you're much prettier than Martinez and Saunders. Oh, I, I don't understand. Well, you see, I figured to wrap up this case around midnight. And if you were guilty, what would I do for a date? <laughs> Folks, here's sure, pure enjoyment for the whole family. Real, honest-to-goodness malteds made with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Easy to fix, too. You just make a tasty paste of Kraft malted milk in the bottom of a tall glass. Then fill the glass brimful of milk and stir it. 
Enjoy the best malted you ever put to your lips. Include craft malted milk on your shopping list for Tuesday. Enjoy a craft malted for snacks, with meals, or before bedtime. But be sure it's craft malted milk at your food store now. The case of the worried champion. The case of the worried champion. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that a boxing title is something a number of people are willing to shoot for. So be sure to listen next week at the same time to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Amzie Strickland as Hazel. This is Jay Jackson speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. Well, thanks for calling, Angel. I can't make it tonight. Have to see a girl about a prize fighter. He was asked to throw a fight, and it looks like he has a choice of being knocked out or knocked off. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Worried Champion. The Worried Champion. It's Sunday in New York, and this particular Sunday happens to be the birthday of boxing champion Tommy Foster. So Foster's manager, Luke Whitney, is throwing a big celebration at the River Steakhouse, and a good time is being had by all, when suddenly Foster's jaw tightens and he scowls as he stares across the room. Whitney notices. Oh, what's the matter, kid? Look who just came in. Who? Oh. Well, what do you know, Steve Cortez? It was in the paper you having the party for me here. That's why he came. Oh, so what? Don't let it get you. I know what he's trying with me. He wants to get my ghost. So you don't let him. You laugh it off. Burns me up. The way he's been yapping in the papers well, about... Part of the game, kid. You should know that by now. Well, he didn't have to come here. Look, if you're going to let him get you like this... Hey, here he comes. Over to this table. All right, just sit tight. Let me do the talking. Save the fireworks for the ring. Well, if this isn't a coincidence. Is it, Cortez? I suppose you didn't know Whitney was having a birthday party for me here tonight? No kidding, champ. Well, happy birthday to you. If I'd known, I'd have brought a cake. Why don't you sit down, Cortez? Join the party. Well, thanks, Whitney, but I don't think the champ would like it. To keep reminding him what's in store for him. Now, look, if you think I'm afraid of you, Cortez... Now, where would I get an idea like that? Just because you've been dodging me for two years? I wasn't dodging. I... Just because the only reason you finally agreed to meet me was the commission threatening to suspend you if you didn't? That's a lie. Oh, Never mind, Whitney. I'll quit riding for you. I see he's the excitable type. So I won't upset him anymore. Until we get in the ring. Oh, yeah? <laughs> now, that's what I call a bright remark. I'll show you who's bright. Get on, you will think you? I'm a scary you. Stop it, I'll be a cop. Let go with me. I'm not taking any more of his life. All right, Cortez, you've been asking for it. Try this on, but stop. Stop. Well, Whitney, there's your champ. If him and me are going to meet in the ring, you better start picking up the pieces. Cortez, you're in good form. You can lay off the bag for a while. How are you, Rich? You disappointed me, son. You disappointed me badly. Yeah, how? The little fracas with Foster the other night. He started it. Of course he wasn't goaded into it, Cortez. You wouldn't dream of needling him. He's punchy. He blows his top easy. Do you know something, son? What? I had 75000 invested in you to take Foster... And then this ridiculous incident. Most disappointing. How do you figure that? I flattened him in ten seconds. Looks to me like you invested smart. 
Where's the disappointment? The odds, son, the odds. You've jumped to a one-to-five favorite. No percentage in backing you with that figure. He'll still win. I always insist on a better return for my I'm money. I'm sorry, Rich, but Foster asked for it. I didn't come here to quibble about the details. Now, why did you come here? You see, Cortez, it's like this. Considering the shift in odds, I'm forced to back Foster now instead of you. You understand? All right, it's your dough if you want to throw it away. You don't understand. I have no intentions of throwing it away. So what do you want me to do? Have I asked you to do anything? I'm beginning to get the idea without you asking. Good. I counted on your good sense. Go chase yourself. I just wanted you to know I'm not the only one betting on Foster. And if you whip him, well, somebody will resent it. I thought I should tip you off, son. I always like to do the friendly thing. Well, thanks so much. Now get out of here. And not so fast. I might be asked your attitude in this matter. If I am, what answer do I give? Oh, you, uh, you want an answer, huh, Rich? Yes. All right. Here it is in a nutshell. So you slugged, Rich? Yeah. For a fellow who makes his living by fighting, it seems to me you're giving away an awful lot of free samples. They asked for it. Even so. Rich wanted me to take a dive. I don't go for that. Going to report him to the boxing commission? I can take care of myself. I don't need the commission. But I thought you're supposed to report any gambler who asks you to throw a fight. Look, leave me handle it my way, will you? Sure, Steve, sure. (laughs) You sure are touchy lately. I got things on my mind. What things? Don't tell me the fight's bothering you. Of course, they don't make me laugh. And what is it? It's nothing. But you just... Look, what are you, a detective or something? No, Steve, I'm just trying to... All the time, you got to act suspicious. Well, I wasn't suspicious, but now I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, now you're beginning to wonder. Yes, I am. Come to think of it, you broke three dates with me last week. I told you, training. Got to get the better of it. One of the nights was the night you had that fight with Foster. You break a date with me and wind up in a nightclub? Not a nightclub. It's a restaurant. That's all. I got to eat, don't I? Act like I never take you nowhere. You're beginning to act like maybe you don't want to. Steve. What's the matter? Is there somebody else? It don't mean anything. Just a couple of dates. Oh, then there is something. I don't get any ideas. It's you getting ideas I'm worried about. I told you, it don't mean anything. It's you and me, baby. You know that. Yeah, you and me and how many others? Yeah? Oh, Tommy Foster. Yeah. Well, come in, champ. Thanks, you, uh, you're Mike Waring, ain't you, detective? Mm-hmm. They call you the Falcon. You're supposed to be good. Well, they call you the champ. You're supposed to be good, too, but Cortez flattened you. I didn't come here to get ribbed, Waring. Why did you come here? I just heard Don Rich called on Cortez the other day. The gambler? The gambler. He asked Cortez to throw the fight. Where'd you hear this? From Margo Marino. She's Cortez's girl. Only they had a fight. And she says Rich proposition Cortez? Yeah. Well... Well, I want you to check, see if she's on level. Why? Well, Cortez should have reported Rich to the commission, and he didn't. So if Margot was shooting straight, Cortez could get himself suspended. You mean you could get him suspended? What's the matter? You afraid to meet him? Why, you... No, 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 careful, Foster. Slugging me is no way to get me to work for you. Everybody thinks I'm a scared of Cortez. Look, I want to meet him, you understand? I've been ready right along, only Whitney wouldn't sign me up. Whitney's your manager? Yeah. So Whitney's a scared of Cortez. He said Cortez wouldn't draw flies. Well, maybe you will after Cortez gets through with you. Funny man. I ought to... Look, look. You came here to get me to help you out of the fight with Cortez. You can't expect my overwhelming admiration. You got it wrong. I just want a fair fight. When I lick him, I don't want nobody saying that he took a dive. That's not the way you put it before. Well, that's the way I meant it before. Now, you're going to take the job, or ain't you? You want me to check with Cortez's girl, find out if she was telling the truth about Rich? Yeah. Well, why not just report what she said to the commission and let them investigate? Well, I don't want to stick my neck out if she's lying. Mm-hmm. What's the girl look like? Oh, really? Yeah. All right, Foster. I'll take the job. Margot Marino? That's right. Mm. Foster was right. About what? 
I don't get it. Angel, you've got it. Look, who are you? What's the Mike I... Waring, the name? Yes, Mr. Waring. Why not call me Mike, huh? I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to call you yet, but I'm getting ideas. Now, what do you want? In. Not so fast. Oh, sure, so fast. Hey! Now, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, Angel. So, uh, let's get started. Hmm? Shall I close the door? I'm warning you, I've got good lungs. You won't need them. I'm here on business. Oh, what business? Why did you tell Foster that Don Rich tried to buy off Steve Cortez? Because it happens to be true. You and Cortez had a falling out, didn't you? Suppose we did. Couldn't it be you're just trying to put him on a spot to get even? Could be, but it's not. Can you prove it? If I had to. What's it to you? Well, you've made a serious charge. I can back it up. I still want to know why you're interested. Who told you what I said? Tommy Foster. Oh. Who are you, a reporter? Not exactly. Then... Say, wait a minute. I'm waiting. You work for Don Rich? <laughs> How'd you guess? Why'd he send you here? To threaten me? Find me off? Well, as a matter of fact... I... Just a minute. Hello? Oh, it's you, Steve. No, I haven't changed my mind. Now, look, lover boy, if you want to play the field, just don't expect me... Steve! What happened? Steve! What's the matter? I don't know. He was talking to me, and then all of a sudden I heard a noise. It's like a shot. A shot? Yes. Steve gasped, and then he wasn't talking to me anymore. Well, we'd better get to him right away and see what Steve has to say about it, if anything. Home of the KMX Drama Hour. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A minute has passed since a phone call from Steve Cortez to Margot was interrupted by what Margot said sounded like a shot. Now Margot and Mike Waring have rushed down to the street to look for a taxi to take them to Cortez. There's a cab. Taxi! Taxi! Come on, Margot. All right. All right, Angel, get it. Hey, driver, where'd she go? Right there she is, mister, running across the street. Margo, hey, come back here. All the crazy... Margo, look out! Brother, was that close? Yeah, just missed. Well, there's no use my following. I might not have her luck in traffic. <laughs> you must be some wolf to make a risk a neck like that. Well, you got it wrong, driver. You know, how come she scrams like that? I'm not sure, but I don't think what scares her is a fate worse than death. You don't? No, what I think scares her is death. All right, driver, let's go. Hello, Sergeant Corbett. Mike Waring. I hate to disturb your canasta, old boy, but I found a stiff in room 308 at the Hotel Aldrich. Look into it, will you? Now that I've confirmed the murder, I can't hang around here. I have something more important on my mind. <laughs> no, not blonde. Brunette. So long, Corbett. Oh, hello, Waring. Come in. Thanks, Foster. Well, any luck, Waring? Yeah, lots of luck. You're not going to have to fight Cortez. Oh, you mean he's suspended? I mean he's dead. Eh? Huh? Murdered. Holy smoke. Who done it? Well, Foster, you just had a mouthful. Hey, me and him had that row the other night. You think anybody get the idea that yeah, I... probably. You got to help me. That's my business. Okay. You got yourself another job. Right. Did I hear somebody say Cortez was murdered? Yeah, Whitney. Wearing this, my manager, Luke Whitney. Hello, Whitney. Hello. Oh. Uh, what's this about Cortez? Was he really... Yeah, really and truly. Champ, do you realize what this means? What does it mean? There goes our gate. We were sure of a sellout. No question about it, but no. I uh, thought you said Cortez wouldn't draw flies, Whitney. When did I say that? Well, you said it. Oh, oh, you mean last year, Champ. Sure, but now things are different. Cortez has a rep. We'd have cleaned up a sellout, no question. Mm -hmm. In fact, you might have had a double sellout. Hmm? Huh? Well, sellout at the gate, and maybe Cortez would have sold out in the ring. That's why uh, you hired me, wasn't it, Foster? Yeah, well, was was that Marino Dame on the level? So it would seem. Hey, then, that's the way it ties up. Rich Dick is with Cortez. Cortez gives him the air, so Rich knocks off Cortez. No, 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 no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Foster. 
Right now, I'm interested in the girl. Do you think she killed Cortez? Hardly, Whitney. She was with me when it happened. Oh, well, then why bother with her? Because she's making with an offbeat routine. First of all, Foster, how come she told you about Cortez and Rich? Well, her and Cortez had a row. She wanted to give them the business. She could have gone to the commission. Well, she didn't know none of the commissioners, but she knew me. Uh-huh. And she figured I'd take it from there. I see. You know where I can find her? Yeah, I know her address. Yeah, she's not there. Have any idea where she'd go to hide out? Hide out? Who's the girl hiding out from, Waring? From me, Whitney. You? Yeah, and if this is the kind of results I get, I'm going to ask Dale Carnegie for my money back. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Hello, I'm Mike Waring. I'm looking for Don Rich. Mike Waring, I've been half expecting you. Come in, sir. Come in. Thank you. I take it you're rich. That's right. How come you were expecting me? And before we go any further, a conversation like this can never get anywhere unless one of the participants has the initiative. Therefore, allow me. Uh, all right, Rich. The gun gives you the initiative. Now what? Now you raise your hand above your head. That's it. And now we walk into the living room. Go ahead. Walk into my parlor. You may sit in that easy chair. Well, thank you. And if you like, you may put your hands down, one on each arm of the chair. As long as you keep them just like that, there'll be no trouble. You comfortable? With that heater pointed at my middle? <laughs> sure, I feel fine. It's necessary for the moment. I understand you're working for me. Oh, you found Margo. Where is she? Look, son. Sir? I drew this revolver so that I should do the interrogating. I want to know why you said you were in my employ. I didn't. You just admitted it. The girl said so. It was her idea. What's your connection with her? I've just been wondering the same thing about you. But I have the gun. Oh, I haven't forgotten. Then answer my question and don't move your hands. All right, all right. I won't move my hands. How about my feet? Oh! No, I'll take that gun. No! Yes! There we are. All right, son, you win. Oh, don't look so grim, Rich. Don't tell me you didn't get a big kick out of it. I'm in no mood for humor. All right, as long as you're still in the mood for conversation. Only this time I have the initiative. What do you want to know? Your tie-up with Margot. There isn't any tie-up. She ran out on me. She blabbed to you. Because she thought you were working for me. Well, what's that got to do with it? Why not ask her? Where can I find her? At her apartment, probably. Well, that's the last place. She knows I might look there. She doesn't care anymore. How do you know? She was afraid of me. She thought you were employed by me. Now that that misunderstanding has been cleared up... She's not afraid of me anymore. How about you? Not afraid of me either. I made it clear she had no reason to be. But why was she in the first place? Because of the way you acted. Oh, no, 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 no. There was something else. I think not. I think so. Well, ask her. I intend to. So long, son. <laughs> Hello, Margo. Oh. oh, you, Mr. Waring. Uh, Mike. Well, oh, still in a soup course, huh? I'll join you. I uh, was up at your place. The man at the desk said you'd be here. Mm-hmm. That'll cast him a nut sack on next Christmas. <laughs> I thought you straightened things out with Rich. Not with you. Why did you say you work for him? I didn't. You did. Who do you work for? Freelance. And what did you want with me? I told you, checking the yarn about Rich and Cortez. Suppose I tell you I was just lying. Steve and I had a fight and I wanted to make trouble. Look, it was a fool thing to do, but I was upset. Mm-hmm. How much did Rich pay you? What? To get you to switch your story. Nothing. You know, Angel, if you build up that fight between you and Cortez, you're just strengthening your motive for the murder. What of it? Well, you wouldn't want people to get the idea you killed Steve, would you? I couldn't have killed him. I was with you at the time. Oh, yes, that's right. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Sarcastic. I was with you. So you were. Well, then? I'm afraid I'll have to skip dinner with you after all, Angel. And there are a couple of points I want to check. I'll be seeing you. Don't count on it, Mr. Waring. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, Champ, for you. Who is it? Mike Waring. Oh, yeah. Hello, Waring. Listen, Foster, I've just about got the case wrapped up. Yeah? You mean you know who killed Cortez? I think so. Well, that's great. Uh, Who is it? I have to iron out a couple of details first. Maybe you can help me. 
Can you come over to my place? Well, I, I got to see a guy at the Hotel Randolph in a little while. Couldn't you meet me there? We'll, we'll talk in the lobby, huh? Okay, Foster, 20 minutes? That's good for me. 20 minutes it is. So long, Larry. Okay, mister, here you are. Let's tell Randolph. All right, driver. Thank you. Say, can you change... Oh, hey. Mister, are you all right? Mister! Oh, no, not you. Well, that's funny. I could have sworn it is. I read in the paper you were shot. In the leg. It's not fatal. Oh, too bad. I'm coming in. No, you're not. Now, look, I'm in no condition to argue about it. But if you don't cooperate with me, you're taking a big chance. How so? Well, somebody tried to kill me. Next time you may succeed, unless I wrap this up quickly. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Well, now, don't you forget, Angel, I'm your alibi. What? Your proof that you didn't kill Cortez is that I was with you when he was murdered. But if I'm not around to I admit... I see what you mean. All right, come in. Thank you. Now, how about the truth? What truth? About you and Rich. I don't know what you mean. As soon as Cortez was murdered, you ran to Rich. I didn't. Well, there's no use denying it. He knew about me. He said he got it from you. Well, I... I found him, that's all. Why? I thought you were working for him. I wanted to know what it was about. The next time I saw you, you changed your story about Rich and Cortez. How did Rich get you to do that? He didn't. Rich didn't go up to see Steve. I lied about it. And later I decided to tell the truth, that's all. Mm-mm. You've got it backwards. Now, if you want my help, you've got to level with me. I am. No, you're not. You're afraid. Yeah. All right, now listen. Rich won't hurt you. I'll see to that. But you're in a spot, Mark, or a bad spot. And the truth is all that can help you. So now let's have it straight or I'm getting out of here and don't count on me for an alibi. All right, you win. What do you want to know? Why you switch stories? Well... When Steve was killed, I thought Rich might kill me, too. Oh, you thought Rich was the murderer? Well, naturally. So I escaped from you and, and called him. I swore I wouldn't say anything about his going to see Steve if he'd only leave me alone, and he promised. You accepted his promise? Well, what else could I do? Now, oh, come on, Margo. Where are we going? I want to wrap up this case, and I'd like you to be alone. Well, what can I do? I mean, you can hold my hand, Angel. Let's go. Adventures of the Falcon. Only a few moments have passed since a limping Mike Waring took Margot by the hand and led her out of the apartment. His goal? To wrap up the case. Now we find Mike at the local steakhouse that serves as Foster's hangout. Oh, Foster. Whitney. Oh, Waring. Yeah, Margot. Oh, sit down. Join us. Thanks, Whitney. Don't mind getting off this leg. I heard you were in the hospital. Yeah, Foster, overnight. Well, just what happened to you anyway? Uh, Whitney, I went over to the Hotel Randolph to keep an appointment with Foster here. When I got out of the cab, somebody was waiting for me in the alley next to the hotel. Mm-hmm. He plugged me, that's all. Well, you know who it was, Larry? Yeah, sure, Foster. Well, you mean you've seen him? No, but I know him. Who? Same person who killed Cortez. Bullet was from the same gun. But do you know who killed Cortez? I think so, Foster. Well, who? Well, you're the one who told me to go to the Hotel Randolph. Now, wait a minute. You don't hang this on me. All this, I said. You know, I was in a taxi on my way over when you got it. I didn't get there left after the shooting. Now, if you don't believe me, you can check with the driver of my cab. I already have. Huh? I called a taxi company and found the driver who took you over. Well, what did he say? He said you arrived a few minutes after the shooting, so you must have been in this cab at the time of the shooting. Well, all right, then. Yeah, Foster, all right for you. Well, Mike, you've cleared Foster and you've cleared me. Cleared you? Well, you were with me at my place when Steve was killed. Was I? Well, of course. What do you I, uh, checked on that, too. The exact time of his death hasn't been determined. But we know the exact time, because he phoned. Well, he was on the phone when he was shot. At least you say he was on the phone. All we have is your word for it, Margo. Oh, but it's... Are you trying to say I'm lying? No. Well, you can't think I killed Steve. Oh, yes, I could. I almost did. But now that I know Whitney is the murderer, that lets you out, Margo. I... 
Well, you don't mean that, Wary. Well, here comes Sergeant Corbett of the police. I asked him to meet me here. So, Whitney, you'll get a chance to see just exactly what I do mean. Hello, Corbett. Why did Whitney do it, Mike? Well, he was sure Cortez could beat Foster. So when the Boxing Commission forced the match, Whitney killed Cortez to get rid of the threat to Foster's title. If he get rich, we'd take the rap for it. But the match was a sellout. Think of the money Whitney lost by killing Steve. Ah, peanuts compared to hanging on to the title. There'd be other matches. And Foster had a good chance of whipping anyone but Cortez. I see. Well, why did Whitney try to kill you? Because I said I had an idea who the murderer was, and Whitney thought I meant him. Well, didn't you? No, not at the time. It was his shooting at me that put me straight. How? Well, the person who shot at me was waiting in the alley next to the Hotel Randolph. That meant he knew I was going there. Uh-huh. Well, Whitney was with Foster when Foster made the appointment to meet me at the Randolph. And they were the only ones who knew. So, had to be one of them. And when the cab driver cleared Foster, that left Whitney. All right, Mike. Only one more question. What's that? You insisted on bringing me along when you nabbed Whitney. Why? I didn't help you. Well, Angel, suppose all I'd ask was for you to have dinner with me tonight. Would you have accepted? <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed tonight's KNX Drama Hour.